joined by Kelly Baloi, founder of Girls Leading Change, who's also like many of us today following day one of the second presidential summit on gender-based violence and femicide. But we just also want to get some of your views around how the country really can tackle successfully this scourge or this pandemic, as the president reminded us a short while ago. Kelly, good afternoon. Welcome to today and thank you for your time. First up, uh, what did you take out of what the president had to say today? Well, um, Dan, I will be speaking. Hi, good, good afternoon, um, viewers. I'll be starting off with the theme of the, 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 the summit, which is very important. And I hope that it's not a trap for government to say that accountability, acceleration and implementation um, is the theme of the summit um, is very important because that has been the, the 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 plea for many from many activists from the people of the public that government needs to be accountable. They need to keep accountable um, be those accountable to implement policy at all times. But the most important part is the now. Is government aware of the red tape? They are aware of the red tape and the bureaucracy of keeping them from doing this implementation. Are they putting things in place to make sure that the now can happen, that justice can be served for victims um, of gender-based violence? I mean, Dan, he, um, the president shared staggering statistics of the 52% increase of murders within this country, murders of women. It is alarming. And yes, we need to see change happen now. And the president underestimates us when he says, keep me accountable, knock on my door. We've been doing that for the past four years since um, these um, incidents have been coming to light as blatantly as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you talk about acceleration as one of the words that I use for the theme. He spoke about the failure of government and himself to have established by now this GBV council, which was promised. And then he was blaming the processes and saying, but now mm -hmm. they're going to try and fast track that uh, in, uh, in parliament. But that should not have been the case in the first place. And he admitted Yes, definitely, Dan. And the fact that the president would say that it took two years within parliament through consultations, and that is why I am saying, are they sure that they use the word now? Do they have things in place to cut those red tapes, to make sure that bureaucracy doesn't stand in the way of the implementation. And I do feel that the president um, should not be making these excuses because in 2019, they did declare this to be um, a, a, a crisis, a national crisis within our country. So for the president to say things, something like that and make excuses, which we knew he was going to do, is uncalled for and it is unacceptable. Now, the, 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 the other issue that came up for me, I don't know about, about you, Kelly, is the role of us as men. I thought, mm -hmm. listening to him, he was very strong in condemning us as men and, and really used the words like shameful indictment of men of our country. And, and, and that's very strong words, but calling on us as men to, be, to really be the ones who, who resolve this. It's not up to the women, he said, to stop GBV. It's up to us. Definitely, Dan. Um, as Girls Leading Change, we work with females. We, look, we work with young girls between the ages of 13 and 18, but we are constantly being called on from the community to work with men. And unfortunately, that is not our mandate. But if you look at statistics, 51% of women have experienced gender-based violence. It, it could be higher now by about 3%. And 76% of men admitted to perpetuating um, the language of gender-based based violence or perpetuating the, um, you know, the experience or whatever the case may be with regards to gender based violence, 76% is quite high. It is quite high. So we need to teach our men to change the language, um, how we approach, how the men approach women and also including men in these spaces. So as an organization, we make it a point 
to invite, you know, the fathers within the space so that that aspect can also be done. But we also call on men to create these spaces where it can be a man-to-man -man talk or man-to-boy talk um, as to how um, men need to treat women and understand um, um, the gender differences um, within our community. Yeah, the president spoke about in every part of society across the board, we need to mm -hmm. set up these uh, men's dialogues, the, the point that you, you are raising there. But just on you, you as you focus on girls, I don't want to lose that, uh, uh, that, mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that matter at this moment. What do you, how do you empower the girls? Because as you said, 51% uh, have said they've been victims of, of GBV, while 76% of young men said they've been perpetrators. Yes, they have perpetuated um, um, gender-based violence in some or other way. Um, I would allude to language. Language is incredibly important. How um, the language that we use within our community, especially um, you know, within our impoverished communities, certain things that is said towards women um, that can be degrading. Many men don't know, many young men have not been taught that you cannot say that to a woman. It is unacceptable. So just having to address the, the, the language um, that young men are using towards women, if it's towards the women, towards young girls within schools. And we also see with the young girls that we are using, they tend to adopt that and think that it, it is okay, you know, to be called a certain name, to be called, um, to be alluded to something that 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 is not as acceptable um so the language is, is is very important but at the same time what we emphasize on is education we need to educate our communities and also dan also alluding to the amendment um the bowl the gender-based violence amendment bills that was released earlier this year about the online um protection orders um that can come into to, to, to play. That is also something that we have taken upon ourselves that when the correctional services decides to implement that, we are going to be forefront in educating our women that there is um, this um, platform that can be used and you know the safety of the family can be brought forth so education is very important even educating the young women on these bowls the amendment bowls is also important young girls knowing their rights young girls knowing where they can go to receive the services to help them we know that saps is under resourced saps is in a chronic condition right now um if you look at the vacancy rate it is staggering so I, I really do encourage, and the president as well, encourage all sectors to come in and assist um, 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 okay. assist in fighting this gender-based violence scourge. Yes. Yeah, Kelly, for you, in the last minute, if you may, very quickly, for you, how will you measure the success of this second summit that's taking place today and tomorrow? Measuring the success is, is quite difficult, Dan, um, but from our side, we are able to, we have our database of our young women that we can use, um, that we can no, be, Sorry, we, sorry, know, sorry. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean in measurement in that sense. Sorry, I wanted to say, for you, what would make it successful? You look back at it and say, this was success. What things will you look for to determine whether it was successful or not? Um, if all departments within government um, play their role, um, the president spoke about the multi-sectoral -sec um, um, approach, the whole of government approach. Is each and every department doing what they need to do? Only then will we see the successes that we need to see. Social development needs to play their role. SAPS um, needs to play, the policing needs to play their role. Correctional service needs to play, play their role. All departments need to play their role. Only then will I see that something can be done and will be done for women and children in this country. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Kelly Baloya. Also your reflections. She's the founder of the organization Girls Leading Change, just sharing with us some of the experiences and insights as we are looking at the second presidential summit on gender-based violence and femicide. That's underway today, being day one, and is going to conclude tomorrow at Gallagher State in Midrand.